Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Connor James. Nearly one week away from Election Day, Governor Matt Bevin and Attorney General Andy Bashir go head to head in their fourth of five debates. Tonight, the two candidates wasting no time hitting on their key issues. The debate tonight hosted by KET. Nick Oliver has the details in our top story at 11. Yeah, good evening to you. It has been a busy campaign trail to say the least. Both of these candidates entered into their fourth debate tonight here at KET. It was really like their first. They dove back into a lot of those key issues and of course the reoccurring theme, pensions and teachers. The debate was hosted by KET and it was the candidates first in a studio, but just as lively like we have seen in front of audiences. Now the debate touched on the daunting topics such as teachers in the state, Medicaid, and of course, Kentucky's pension situation. But the topic that was brought up again and again was expanded gambling in the state. Attorney General Andy Bashir forced his hand on why he says it could solve the pension problem. However, Matt Bevin says if he keeps his office, he won't budge, saying nobody from the majority of the public or legislators will buy into the trend. We lose over $550 million of revenue every year to those border states just on casinos before sports betting or any of the rest. If we expand gaming, we put that money directly to the pension system. Now, have you or anyone else ever asked him to qualify where this supposed $550 million comes from? Have you ever seen a study ever that actually corroborates that? When we started these conversations a few month, months ago, it was 200, then 250, then it worked its way up to 500. Now it's as much as 550 you used a couple times ago. These are made up numbers. And like we mentioned, this has really been a debating tour that these candidates have been on. They have one more tomorrow, and that will be in northern Kentucky, and then we head into Election Day. Nick Oliver, WKYT. Well, Vice President Mike Pence will make a stop in London this Friday, November 1st. The Vice President is joining Governor Matt Bevin and Congressman Hal Rogers for the 5th District Rally and Fish Fry. The event begins at 3.30 p.m. at the Laurel London Optimist Club. Now, we stopped by Weaver's Restaurant in London, where the Vice President actually stopped earlier this year. Owner Kimberly Weaver says it's a good experience for everyone involved. Well, Weaver says they will be ready if he decides to come back. We have more information on the event and a link to register for tickets on our website, WYMT.com. It's a pretty nice day here in the mountains. We saw plenty of sunshine and those warmer temperatures actually above average for this time of year. We'll go ahead and take you to that almanac 75, so 10 degrees above that average of 65. But hey, not complaining too much. Check it out. Pretty close to that record of 78 set so back in 1989. A little of 70 or 48 this morning, excuse me, a little bit chilly, but right near average of 45 for this time of year. Most of us getting in on that chilly side, you're seeing those 50s down into the Cumberland Valley, 56 Prestonsburg, 61 Pikeville, 60 into Jackson. 55 up into Moorhead. Satellite and radar has been on the quiet side. That'll continue as we head into tomorrow as well. 53 for those overnight lows. Few clouds here and there. Could see a little bit of that patchy fog late tonight, early as we head into tomorrow. More sunshine expected for your Tuesday before that soggy weather returns Wednesday. And for your Halloween, chilly temperatures return after that as well. I'll have all those details coming up in just a little bit. All right, thanks, Paige. Well, a woman is dead and a man is fighting for his life. Police say both were shot, but the circumstances are actually still under investigation. Police believe the shootings happened the result of a domestic situation. It happened on Old Cuba Road in Lincoln in Pulaski County at the Pulaski County line in Eubank. A neighbor says the man who lived in the house was a great neighbor and worked hard for himself and for others, despite losing his legs while serving the country. But it's tragic. You hate to see the outcome like this. That's two lives that one didn't need to go and one that don't need to be in the shape that he's in. Now the sheriff's detective spokesperson tells us that this is still a very active and open investigation. Please say they hope to know a lot more at a later time. Well, family and friends are remembering a teen who died over the weekend in a UTV crash. 17-year-old Summer Disney's friends say while they are heartbroken, it is also hard not to smile when they remember her big heart and her personality. Regardless, it does not make the grieving easier. She was just one of the best people, my best friends. I'm just really going to miss her. 
Summer's funeral is Friday morning at the Knox Funeral Home in Barberville. Well, earlier today, a single vehicle fatal crash in Lee County, Virginia, led to an investigation from state police. Now, police say the crash happened on Middle Wallens Creek Road. VSP reports a 1994 Ford Mustang was traveling eastbound when it ran off the left side of the road and hit a tree. The driver killed during the crash was identified by VSP as Gary Lawson. Lawson was the only person in the vehicle. He died at the scene. Well, a second inmate who went on the run last month in Perry County is back behind bars. Jail officials told us Carl Engel was rebooked in the Kentucky River Regional Jail today. Last month, they said Engel, along with John Miller, attacked a deputy jailer, took a set of keys, and broke free. Police in Floyd County arrested Miller earlier in October. Well, a two-year-old boy in Harlan County is battling cancer. His family says although they have fallen on hard times, they're thankful for the support from the community. Now, we FaceTime them because he is not healthy enough for us to be in the home. We talked to his parents about his journey. Things changed for Knox Turner's family on August 12th. She don't ever think it's going to be your own child. <laughs> the two-year-old has always been rambunctious. But blood work revealed something parents have nightmares about their child having cancer. They done said that it would be probably Thanksgiving and Christmas in the hospital, so. Knox is diagnosed with pre -B acute lymphoblastic leukemia. His parents, Whitney and Brian, are taking care of him along with their three other sons. <laughs> Good job. But right now he's on injections, oral medications, and chemo through his port. After more than 30 straight days in the hospital, Knox is now back home in Harlan County with his family. Knox ain't even going to be able to go trick-or-treating this year, so me and Brian works it out to where, you know, I, I can take the boys places and he can stay here with Knox, so I'm glad I have a support system like that. Thankfully, he has entered into remission, but the cancer is still there. His family started a Facebook page, already amassing nearly 2,000 likes. They ask for only one thing, prayers from the community. The prayers means more to us than any type of money or any type of, you know, it is hard with bills and stuff, but the prayers is what's getting him through it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? The Turners say there's a long road ahead, but they are optimistic they will be able to overcome it. Now, Knox will still be going to UK Weekly for another two months. We have more information on how you can find his Facebook page and learn more about him on our website, WYMT.com. While 3.4 million people in the United States suffer from epilepsy, 33% live with uncontrollable seizures and no available treatment that works. For the first five years of Eli Wooten's life, he was part of this statistic until he was introduced to CBD oil. Now you might remember him from a story we did earlier this year in Leslie County when he scored a special touchdown on Sunday. On Sunday, excuse me, a line of hemp extracted full spectrum CBD was dedicated to the Wooten family by Green Remedy, a hemp company out of Kentucky who sought Eli out to help his family and those like him. They're helping make the dream of the Eli's Hope Foundation become reality. It, it's just amazing. I love it. I love it. A portion of the proceeds will go to Eli's Hope Foundation and Green Remedy Foundation to help families with kids in need like Eli. Well, the Price is Right is not only stopping in Pikeville. They are coming to Corbin in March as well. Staff at the Corbin Arena say they have been trying to get bigger events like the Price is Right tour for several years. They say when they were called by producers asking to come to Corbin, uh, well, they could not have been happier. We've really tried to just bring stuff to this area. And so having Price is Right come here um, after they've been touring for 10 years is amazing. And we're really, really excited about it. The tickets will be between $34 and $54. Well, Halloween is later this week, and that means trick-or-treaters will be out in full force. This time of year has the potential to create big business later on for dentists, as sweet treats can definitely cause cavities and other issues. While many say you should still enjoy Halloween, they definitely want parents and kids to be mindful. Operate under the assumption that it's all has sugar and you just kind of have to prioritize. The chocolates aren't as bad. Um, the things that will get you are the gummy bears, the gummy worms, the Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, caramels, candy corn, anything that's got that sticky to it. 
Holiday says to brush your teeth or drink water after eating the sugary treats to help get the sugar off your teeth. Now over on our website, WYMP.com, we have the latest and up-to-date trick-or-treat days and times. Several cities and counties have changed days today because of the nasty Halloween forecast. Hazard and Perry County is now Friday night, while Floyd, Pike, and Knott Counties have moved to Saturday. Again, we're continuing, continuing excuse me, to update the list on our website, WYMP.com. Well, a well-known Floyd County man died Saturday. Between being a county and commonwealth's attorney and a district judge, 77-year-old James Allen served Floyd County for more than 30 years. District 2 Judge Eric Hall says he is leaving a lasting memory inside and outside of the courtroom. You know, one of the things that Judge Allen always told me was that, you know, remember that uh, when somebody is, is in your courtroom, that's the most important thing in that person's life at that time. And so think about that. James Allen was also a member of the Masonic Lodge. His funeral was today at one inside the Allen First Baptist Church. Well, coming up at 11, we talk, to, we talk with members of a local marching band who brought home a state championship for the second year in a row. Plus, the president spoke on the death of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi during a speech earlier today, and we have new details about that raid. And we have one more day of sunshine before soggy weather returns. I'll have your soggy Halloween forecast coming up.